Hello, everybody. Today, my talk should be related to genetically modified organisms, more closely to genetically modified food. And part of the speech will also be talking about the war, the war that maybe you're not aware of. Well, I'm often asked to say something about this topic, and also they ask me, why exactly are you a supporter of such a controversial thing as genetically modified food? And normally, I say that it's very clear, at least to me and to the bunch of scientists which are dealing with this, that humankind never invented such a fantastic technology that would help us a lot to provide better food, to make it sustainable, and actually, at the same time, to protect the environment. Well, maybe you don't agree, but at least I'd like to show you some examples that maybe you'll start thinking about it. Now, I believe that the majority of us, even those present in this room, don't know exactly what to think about this topic. Is it good? Is it bad? What's the reason? The reason is also the media coverage. The media coverage, most information that actually comes to the audience is like this. A lot of angry people on the streets yelling, for instance, say no to GMO and so on. They're very loud and very angry. So it must be something dangerous about it. Well, next, what's the situation in Slovenia? Is it anything different? Is it the same as around the world? Maybe to put this example, this picture shows so-called flavor saver variety of tomato, which was released in the United States about 18 years ago. And this tomato doesn't wilt so easily. Maybe it needs three weeks to wilt. Well, if I like to put it to my home garden, actually, I can be fined up to 2,500 euros. And if I'm a company, not a person, the fine should be up to half a million. Wow. So I think Slovenian government believe this is something really, really very dangerous. Well, to stay with tomatoes, in 2008, this is a story that one small university group led by Dr. Katie Martin from United Kingdom worked with this flower in the, in the middle. It's a snapdragon. And from this snapdragon, they isolated two genes and transferred them to tomato. So you can see it on the left. This was so-called black tomato. And the reason was that these two genes should provide anthocyanins to this fruit. And the same year, 2008, uh, the black tomato was also invented in Italy. Only, the only reason, difference was that actually they make interspecific hybridization. So they cross to the wild species of tomato, and now they get also black tomatoes. If we compare these two, the genetically modified tomato, it was not produced by just for curiosity. It was produced to, have, to make health benefits. It was tested on mice, and at least in mice, they determined its anti-cancer cancer properties. The non-genetically modified tomato was not tested, and maybe, as you see in the picture, actually, possibly, just the skin is black and inside is more or less red. What about the number of genes introduced? In the first case, in genetically modified, I already told you, two genes were taken from Snapdragon and inserted into tomato. While in the other one, in traditionally produced one, we don't know how many genes were introduced because interspecific hybridization often led to introduction of maybe hundreds of different genes. None of them were tested. So is any of this on the market? The genetically modified one, simply because of this reason, the production method is definitely not on the market, maybe in 10 years, maybe not. And we expect the cost of this release might be tens of millions of euros. Well, uh, the ordinary one, you can buy it in Slovenia and elsewhere around the world. Because no testing is required for these hundreds of genes in introduced, it's already on the market. So the question is, why, what, what is the reason? Why exactly we can have one, one is not allowed? Is the reason that one is bred by traditional method? And is, is also the case that traditional methods means immediately safe? To give you one example, this is the Kranska sausage we are very proud of because Slovenians only produce it. And we are proud also on the method how we do it. And during the production method, this product was smoked to conserve it. This is a typical traditional method. Nobody cares. But, but actually, if you take articles about smoke, smoke is quite dangerous. You know, it contains mutagenic and carcinogenic components. But it is still allowed. And 
probably you never heard about this. You did? Maybe not. Well, but I'm sure that you did hear that genetically modified organisms are causing cancer, didn't you? I suppose yes. Because this is what you hear from time to time. Let me tell you just one example from October 2013. It was written in newspaper that genetically modified food should, according to opponents, cause different illnesses, organ failure, tumor development, cancer, infertility, immune dysfunction, allergies, or even premature death. That's a very strong one. OK, so what the scientific part said about that? The science said, well, genetically modified food was tested, is tested more than any other food. And every evidence we say, it is the genetically modified food is safe. Well, what would an ordinary European consumer think about this? I would suppose most of the consumers would say it's not a big deal. It doesn't really matter anyway. Do I use it or do I don't? I'm not losing much. Well, let me think if this is correct. I'll try to give you a few examples that maybe you'll change your mind. I met a colleague of mine, Dr. Jonathan Napier. He comes from the Rottenstedt Research Institute, United Kingdom, one of the oldest agricultural schools around the world. And he and his group has been working for 15 years on omega-3 fatty acids. This is the case, and omega-3 oils, I guess you know that this oil can prevent cardiovascular diseases, improve brain development and function, or even lower inflammation. So it has a lot of health positive properties. So the group of Jonathan Napier have constructed seven genes taken out of algae predominantly, put to the plant, and now plants can be the source of this life-saving product. So far, if we want to get long-chain omega fatty acids to our bodies, we have to consume fish food. It's the only source that can give us the correct omega-3 fatty acids at the moment. Now, also the camelina plant, this is the plant that this group chose, also produces the same omega-3 fatty acids. Now, the scientific work was finished. It was done. And the question is, can we buy this life-saving oil? We need a quarter of gram per day, for instance. Well, I mentioned the colleague is coming from Rotamstedt. And maybe this, somebody remember this, Rotamstedt 2012, what happened? This was in the media. A lot of protests, people yelling, being angry. Why? Because they wanted to destroy genetically modified wheat field, which was protected genetically to be resistant to aphids. Well, my colleague said at that time, last year, you know, 350 policemen came and they protected us. It was not destroyed. So I said, you've been lucky. Because if you, if you look at this data, since 1997, 80 acts of vandalisms against genetically modified food in Europe happened. In majority, fields were destroyed and nothing happened to protesters. So I said, at least this change in Great Britain. Well, but again, I said, this camelina oil is far away from our store shelves. Why exactly? Ah, of course, because of the protests. All the time, protesters on the streets yelling, GMOs are completely unsafe, and particularly what they say, they are not tested. It's not enough testing, not testing, not tested. Well, let me ask you one another example. What about environmental safety of genetically modified food? This picture came from China and shows a river or a lake eutrophicated heavily. Usually, we believe eutrophication is caused by nitrogen or phosphorus leaching from the soil. And this is such a case. Usually, agriculture is one of the reasons that uh, give this nitrogen and phosphorus <coughs> given away. Now, in fact, science has the answers. This was given lecture in 2010, explaining these are rice plants. And those on the right are actually those that can have two genes added by genetic modification and they can give excellent yields with a lower amount of nitrogen. The same was done in energy crop, and the same was done in phosphor with phosphorus. So this is, these are rice plants which could grow in Southeast Asia, very, which possesses land with a lot of decrease, diminished phosphorus. So the rice is already available. Not only rice, there are other plants. And for instance, this, is, this I like very much because it is another source of phosphorus, phosphate, which only those 
agricultural plants could utilize, but not the wheat plants. So the wheat will not grow, the false wheat could be utilized. The same with the pig farms. Corn already exists that contains phytase gene, and phytase means that phosphorus would, not, would be consumed by pigs completely and not be leaching outside to the rivers and streams. So evidently, the science has the answers. What about natural disasters? We are often afraid of drought, for instance. It's a serious problem, but we already have the answers. There is an example in wheat. It's advertising for wheat, which is heat and drought tolerant, much more than ordinary one. And this one was already allowed to be grown on the fields, maize plants, which are also drought resistant. And the same with some energy plants and some others, which I don't list. We are also afraid of getting plants getting frozen, so the frost is another problem. And in spring, we are just worrying which would our cherries and other fruits not get frozen. But we already have the answers. This picture comes from eucalyptus research, and the missing points are the ordinary um, eucalyptus which get frozen at zero degrees centigrade, but the one with genes added actually survived to minus eight degrees. So again, science already has the answers. Let me ask you, is it good for our economy? I would say yes. But of course, the masquerade goes on. You can see a lot of protests. Stop genetically modified trees. Stop because, why exactly? Oh, because it's not tested. I told you already. There is a lot of people saying it hasn't been tested, not tested enough. Well, about testing. Very recently, there was an article dealing just with those data existing already on food safety with genetically modified, and there are 1,700. I make a small calculation. If you would like to read just the titles of these articles, you would need about four hours. Four hours? And I really don't believe that any of these protesters on the streets ever read one single of these 1,700 articles. So, this is evidently a propaganda war going on. And if it is a propaganda war, how it should be treated? I found it somewhere that the master of propaganda war said, if you tell a lie big enough and keep repeating it, people will eventually come to believe it. And if I'm correct, the words came from Joseph Goebbels. Well, any war, including the propaganda war, needs its funding. Who funds this war? There are, of course, different activist organizations which are very interested to spread information, in this case, against genetically modified organisms. And then there are politicians. They hear them, and they have to decide how to deal with this problem. And most often, what they do exactly, they go to the parliament, they go to governments, and decide to even support this kind of negative information. So they give them money to these organizations, and so they have it, and they are even louder and louder and louder. This is, believe me, happening. Well, but you know, even the propaganda war has its victims, and it is very clearly dem could be very clearly demonstrated if we talk about vitamin A deficiency. About 8 million children during 10 years died on this problem. And this is not a nice picture of such a victim. And why I said it's a victim? Because there is golden rice already for 10 years existing, but they are not using it. They are not using, although it was developed, and it is not growing and not saving millions of lives. Why exactly? Oh, of course, because of the protests. Just these are just a few of them. Uh, simply uh, preventing it to be released to the fields. The, the, the one on the right side is just protests which destroyed one of these fields this year. And we found out it was even supported by the Swedish government funds. Well, compare the inputs. To create golden rice, inventors need, during 10 years of research, 2.6 million to develop golden rice. Greenpeace alone spends each year $7 million to abstract genetically modified organisms. Well, maybe you heard about Dr. Patrick Moore. He is a Greenpeace co-founder and now very strongly oppressive to them, and actually what he's dealing, he's organizing protests. This is one of them, saying very clearly, Greenpeace, crime against humanity, eight million children dead, you should allow golden rice now. Well, let's end with at least one positive story, not to be so negative and not to be misleading you. This is a small example of what should be done. Uh, eggplant or brinjal called in India, Bangladesh, and so on. 
Uh, this plant is an important vegetable in this part of the world, but unfortunately, besides being so, it has to be spread a lot. It has to be spread with heavy insecticides to produce anything at all. And about 10 years, it's already the existing genetically modified eggplant brinjal, which can actually no need much spraying because it can protect itself by the addition of one single gene. Uh, this is, of course, what's happening, a lot of protests, particularly in India, and India never decided to release it so far. Uh, there are often a lot of organizations, this one, for instance, saying no to brinjal, BT brinjal, of course, just don't grow it, or if you're still not afraid enough, a picture like this maybe should scare you, so don't, don't eat it, it's definitely dangerous. Well, why I say it's a positive story? because very recently, in October 2013, Bangladesh became the first South Asian country to approve commercial cultivation of BT brinjal. Well, this was something really new. And if this would actually happen, and it will in, during next year, you'll be much more in trouble if you want to get, have a picture like this, at least in brinjal in Bangladesh, because spraying would be needed much less as so far. Well, maybe you should say one swallow does not make a spring. But I should also say, but spring always comes, doesn't it? Thank you. <laughs>